What's up everybody, Jeremy Lord here and welcome to another illustration tutorial. Uh, in today's video we're going to go through a really quick little hack or a fix for the paint bucket in Adobe Photoshop. Um, and so what I mean by that is if we switch over to Procreate, um, you can see that actually Procreate has this feature whereby you can do fills very quickly and just kind of drop a color into um, your kind of outline and it fills it really seamlessly without um, any kind of pixelation on the edge where your line meets the fill. Um, so if we switch back into Photoshop you can see that one of the issues that Photoshop has is you'll see that if I just kind of paint in here uh, and I'm on a layer you'll notice that it will just kind of make this weird little line of pixels on the edge here so again where my stroke meets the paint bucket you'll see that it just kind of does this horrible shitty thing and one of the reasons for that is because the brush in photoshop has this kind of anti-aliasing and if you zoom in quite close you can see that the edge isn't this kind of clean perfect line between this kind of cream color and the purple that i've got we've got these pixels that happen um, to be kind of a, a few different colors there. So Photoshop doesn't really know how to cope with that And it's one of the things that if you're kind of doing quick outlines or fills You'll notice that that can be a bit of a pain in the ass where like for instance here I've got this illustration of a geisha if I want to fill the, the face Because I've got this nice thick outline on the edge here, which is something that I always kind of like to do It's a style that I kind of like to work with um, but it's also really practical because it just means I've got a little buffer zone to um, do my fills adequately what I'd have to do now theoretically is go in and kind of like hand fill this in which is cool and you know, it's not necessarily like the end of the world um, but it takes a lot of time and you might miss a few kind of like bits and pieces a few just kind of little sharp bits of color so it's probably going to be a little bit faster to use the paint bucket but as I said with the paint bucket even if I'm filling with that color um, it does this horrible thing so you could then just go over that with your paintbrush but that's an extra kind of step um, and we don't want to do that so the hack here um, is basically instead of using the brush we're actually going to use the pencil instead um, and what you can kind of see the difference in between the pixel um, quality of my um, pencil versus my brush is my pixel quality on the brush is nice and clean. It gives the illusion of a nice clean kind of smooth line. If I zoom all the way out, um, you can see that that line appears to be a lot smoother, a lot cleaner, whereas this one's a little bit jagged. It's a little bit kind of pixelated. Um, but because of that, if I zoom in all the way, you can see that there isn't this weird kind of discoloration in between the cream and the purple. And so that means that when I come in with my paint bucket, that's going to do it completely perfectly. There isn't that line there in where the join meets the um, the brush. So this is gonna be really kind of cool. I use this all the time when I've got this. And again, because I've got these really thick black outlines, the the downside of using the, the um, pencil tool, which is that kind of pixelated aliased edge, isn't really gonna be a big deal because that is gonna be hidden behind um, my black outline here or whatever color outline I'm working with. And so that's going to just going to be a really quick way for me to get these fills in super quick and get them really, really clean. Now, obviously, that's going to be a little bit of a different story if I'm kind of doing colors like the, the red dot on her face. If I was to try and do that with my pixel, um, I'm sorry, my pencil tool, um, I guess you could also call it a pixel tool. It's kind of the same thing. Obviously, because I don't have the black outline to hide that, the exterior line work of that's going to be a little bit nasty. Um, so there are limitations to this, but if you are kind of doing these these fills in that way, you can um, try and sort of hack it in that way. But I just want to show you guys one last thing here, uh, and that has to do with the tolerance setting on the paint bucket. So uh, I'm just going to make a new document, just an A3 300 DPI, and I've fiddled with that uh, tolerance. But by default, it's at 100. Uh, what happens is you'll notice that if I um, am working on the flat background layer, which is a little bit of a moot point um, in Photoshop, if you're doing everything on the same flattened layer, depending, I guess, on what you're doing, but in most cases, that's not going to be great. It's going to kind of defeat the purpose of working in Photoshop, is increasing that tolerance 
from 100 to like, I don't know, let's say the max is 255 by the way. So if you boost it to 255, you'll see what happens. It'll just fill the entire canvas. Um, that's shit, don't want that to happen. Um, so let's go to like 220. I'm going to fill that again. So you'll notice that that's done a pretty good job. Um, there's not a single bad pixel or pixel that's not that kind of pink color that I want it to be. Um, so that looks like problem fixed. But again, as I said, the issue is as soon as I make a new layer and do exactly the same thing and set my tolerance up here still at 220, you'll notice that those pixels reappear again because it's on a separate layer. I don't know why it does that, um, but it is not necessarily the best way to do this so it, it still kind of the best way is to just use the pencil tool and create your shapes if you're using those kind of thick black outlines like i tend to do then you will see that that will fix your problem um, the other side of it is that you're contending with this horrible pixelated line on the outside um, so it's a little bit of give and take but overall that's a pretty solid fix for something that's um not the end of the world, but a little bit naggy and annoying. Um, so that's it for this week's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, then as always, a like and a subscribe would be super appreciated. Uh, and otherwise, we will see you guys next week for another illustration video. And in the meantime, take care. Catch you later.